What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today I'm gonna to show you how I sketch and then paint this scene. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. I'm happy to have you again. And I've been listening to your feedback. You wanted more processes full time. So this time I took it one step forward. I'm actually showing you how I take the reference photo, do a preparatory sketch, and then I explain how I am going to approach the painting process here. Uh, and I'm actually doing it and showing you the, uh, the, how I create the scene fully and really explain each and every step of the way real time. So a bit of a long video, uh, but I think you're going to enjoy this one. By the way, I found that I'm allergic to, uh, I found out the doctor told me that I'm allergic to nickel, which is funny because my favorite paint, uh, right? Like my favorite yellow is nickel as a yellow. Uh, so I have, I'll have to avoid touching it. Uh, but in any case, yeah. Uh, so this has been a fun process. As you'll see, a lot of things I could have done better, uh, but hopefully uh, still a lot to take from this and a lot to learn. So let's get started. Okay, so I want to start with a very light uh, preparatory sketch. I don't always do this, uh, but with this one I feel like it'll be a good idea, especially because there are such uh, sharp uh, contrasts and very well-defined shapes. So what I want to do is just uh, try and map out the main shapes that I see uh, and figure out if that works. Um, now, the result doesn't really matter for that preparatory sketch. Uh, all I care about really is doing it for the first time. Uh, and by doing, uh, you, will, you will be able to improve for your painting. So I took measurements and I found out that the two main figures, uh, the two women in the center, are about a third uh, from top and bottom. So that's uh, a nice, nice little setup. Now what I could do is to make it a little more interesting, move them away from the very center a little towards the right. So we'll have one figure here uh, and another one a little to the back. I'm following it very loosely. I don't necessarily even try and figure out what's really in there, but I'm just kind of placing in the shapes. Uh, so that's the woman with the uh, uh, carriage and here we have the baby. I'm just putting in some symbols. Again, uh, this is not meant to be final in any uh, way, shape or form. I'm just trying to figure out the sh different shapes uh, of, the, of the painting. So we have this the carriage here and you see very rough uh, and very sketchy. Then we have uh, another woman here at the back. So we have these two main figures. Now we have another one and that's the um, uh, cyclist. And he, his figure kind of ends here and he's at a bit of an angle. I don't even know if I want to include him necessarily, uh, but I'll just sketch it out and see what it looks like. Uh, so we have uh, uh, one, one uh, wheel or tire is here, another one is a bit at the back. We can see his leg on it, another leg here, that's more than enough. We have another person here at the back. There's this woman here at the top, I'm not gonna leave her there, I'll probably place her here a bit at the, on the, to the left and she's very tall. Um, I'm gonna put her here and make sure that she appears like she's really at the back. Then we've got this uh, structure to the right. We have a bit of uh, leading perspective and I'm kind of eyeballing it. It's not necessarily as accurate because the perspective here isn't the most important part. Now, what doing these kinds of preparations gives you uh, is first off, you start to realize if the composition you were aiming for works. Uh, and second, uh, it, it gives you a better understanding of the shapes of light and shadow, which is basically uh, all the important, uh, everything that's important in the drawing. Uh, so to really get it to be accurate and to look good, you have to get the values right and the drawing right, basically. So here we have a few um, odd shadows coming from the side, but we also have the figures shadows and they cast to the front like so. Uh, here we have a bit of a pile of darkness that I don't even know to define what it is at the moment, but it is important to leave uh, to to um, uh, emphasize the highlights on the people here at the front. The main dark shape, the largest dark shape I would say is this building to the right, this uh, shadow in the foreground, and then the people obviously. So what I'm gonna do is just give this a bit of a definition and we do need to get rid of some of that shadow right over here. So here, and the light comes from the back and it's very strong, so everything here is gonna be fairly uh, dark. 
uh, all of these shapes. Now let's get to the people because that's really the main part here. So what I'm gonna do is just shade in uh, the figures and you can barely see, this is uh, against the light, so you can barely see uh, much of the details on them. And uh, in the final piece, I have to be careful to indeed leave some space around her. We can do that using opaque paint as well. Some shadow here around the bottom. Now we have the shadow that the, the actual thing casts. I'm gonna switch to a bit of a darker, uh, this is a, a, a 6B pencil. Previous one was just a, an HB kind of normal lead. Um, right here. Now I do recognize there are a few highlights near the bottom here that I want to preserve and then the shadow that is cast by the the woman, by the carriage, by everything is here. Another shadow coming at the back. This is the important part. I want to make sure that I leave the highlight on the shoulder of the woman in the front and I may even approach this entire thing uh, very differently. I may do like um paint the people first and then add the background and do it all with zero glazes. That's something I enjoy doing a lot. Maybe I'll decide to focus on the people uh, here to the right and have it more uh, revolving around them. This entire thing is in the shadow, but again, very gentle. Here we have a bit of a stronger shadow, but I will grab the eraser and pull out some highlights from around them, okay? Now we do have these interesting poles here. Uh, that I could add, I'm, I'm still considering it. And this is why you see the value in these kinds of preparatory sketches, because they do help you to get ready. So here we have a highlight at the very top. Now, if you zoom out or take a few steps away from your uh, monitor, this will definitely make more sense because uh, you need to see it a bit uh, zoomed out. And here you get a bit of a better understanding of the scene. Uh, so let's prepare some things and uh, get started. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on the drawing stage. Uh, my paper isn't the perfect proportions of the painting, but that's fine, it's about an eighth of a sheet. Uh, and I'm gonna start the same way by measuring, taking some measurements. Now I'm gonna be a little more careful this time because I don't wanna mess it up. Um, so let's see here. So I would say the main figure is about this tall. So from here all the way to here, this is, I think, a good height to get started with. Um, and I'm gonna leave it around the center because it will be balanced off by the figure behind it. So uh, getting started, the head is generally speaking eighth of uh, the entire length of the body. I'm currently working on improving my, um, my uh, figure drawing skills because this is something that uh, challenges me a lot, especially uh, when I have to actually place them in a drawing, uh, in a painting, as a part of a scene. Uh, but in any case, if I focus just on the figures, I find that my results are a little better. Uh, so now the carriage is about more than half, so it'll be around here, I would say, is where it's gonna start. Uh, and a lot of the work here is gonna be done by the paint, so I'm not too worried about the, the details. Uh, of the figures and whatnot. Uh, all I want to do is get this kind of an impression of the of the general shapes uh, in the drawing. Um, torso area, we got a hand here. Uh, this hand holds the right part of the carriage. Uh, the figure is really barely visible. I don't see anything like what it what she wears or what anything like that. I can barely see, which is okay. So when this happens, you kind of have to wing it. Uh, I'm trying to loosen my hand a bit. And this is a two-part kind of thing. Um, so we have uh, these different, two different sides. And the hand comes over here. And then the shoulders. Uh, now we have the additional figure right here to the right. And another woman, so I'm just putting these very gentle shapes for indicating where the hair is gonna be like. Now if she's playing with her hair or something like that, and then goes straight down downwards. Uh, we have a gap here that is important to get. I'm gonna try and preserve that later on. And now basically we have the, all of the main elements of the two main figures, okay? Now it's gonna take some time. Uh, because, and there's a front wheel here, uh, because I'm really trying to get in um, the, the drawing to be correct, okay? It doesn't have to be pretty, and most of the time it won't be pretty, but you do want it to be correct. So now the, the wheels here, and here I can um, 
uh, invoke some of my artistic license. So we have the shadow coming right through here, kind of like that. It goes all the way here. I don't have to be 100% accurate. Uh, we do have that pole that I will indicate just for later on so that I remember to put it here. Um, and it's important to get these gaps here. So there is gonna be some sunlight here and I will later on have to really focus and make sure I get it. Uh, now the carriage is three dimensional so it needs to be a little wider probably, like so. I'm gonna put just an indication <laughs> of a baby here, but we don't need too much because uh, this is all gonna be heavily in the shadow. Uh, same as here. There's a towel here or whatever. Uh, now we're done with these two. So I want to frame it up just a little bit here and I'm gonna place uh, this wall of the building and I kind of like the way it comes uh, uh, diagonally and I'll probably make this part darker. It's not as dark in the original photo. And then uh, around the area, this part of the carriage, we have that kind of uh, shadow to the side that I do want to get because it does create a nice interesting kind of contrast uh, with the, the carriage and I'm just trying to figure out the angle here so it's maybe a little less harsh uh, like so this entire area is gonna be much 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 darker just indicating that as well as the shadow here um, and while we're at it I will better uh, indicate this kind of thing uh, a lot of the time what I'm doing when I'm drawing is actually creating symbols for myself so I'm the thing isn't gonna be, uh, isn't going to look the way I draw it, but it does give me a little bit of a hint of where it's gonna be and uh, how I will indicate it, just generally speaking. So we have another one here and the last one won't fit, so I'm not gonna place it in because again, this is a little more, a tighter uh, fit than the, the actual photo. Uh, and then we get this kind of cast shadow. Now it's important to follow the direction of the, the uh, curb or whatever it is. Uh, we have another one right over here. And you can see how this, it, it's not a straight line, the shadow. It, and it's, it changes the angle, then goes back. Okay, so this is an important thing to get. Um, we have some shadows here in the foreground that I may preserve. Um, now I do feel like trying to figure out if something is off here. This part is a little too low. I'm gonna make it higher. Just getting my trusty eraser because it does ruin the sense of um, the height of everything and the proportions. It's supposed to be somewhere around here. I don't know why, but intuitively, uh, I just figure out that's not the way. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense because this is about the same area as this woman's legs. So I wanna make sure that it's actually that height. And when I place it here, it creates this weird feeling that something is off uh, and you have to really um, work on your um, perspective and composition skills then these things become a little more uh, obvious so now it looks a little better to me we have this building here now I'm, I'm just gonna throw in some indication of these supporting beams here to the right not a lot and uh, this part is gonna lighten up a little so I'm just gonna close it off like that over here. Now we have another woman. I'm just gonna leave her where she is this time. I kind of like the way it looks. And you can make these decisions much easier if you already did kind of a preparatory sketch, you see. Uh, now I want to just talk a bit about the later stages of actually painting this. Uh, what I'll end up doing is, I'm gonna put the cyclist in as well. Uh, what I'll end up doing I think is a very uh, light first wash, uh, just to make sure that I give it some glow, some yellow, because it does feel like a strong sunlight that I do want to get. I do want to uh, preserve that kind of feeling. Um, so this one, this guy goes here, then there's a straight line for the hand. Trying to uh, keep this very simple. If this was meant for a final um, drawing, just pencil, I would have gone much slower, but with this, uh, I find that I get a better result if I don't overdo the the details and pencil lines, so hopefully that won't end up backfiring on me. But again, this is experimentation, trying to feel free to fail in front of you, in front of the camera. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, and now I'm putting in, so this is his uh, leg, 
another leg a little to the back here so somewhere around here this one's somewhere around here uh, because he's pedaling and then we get this line of the uh, bicycle and finally the, the two uh, wheels one here one there hopefully the the painting stage will pick up the pace uh, quite a bit because the painting is generally uh, faster for me now i'm going to simplify his shadow a bit um, and not worry too much about getting it as detailed as it is uh, in the original photo now we do have uh, some other people at the back we have a person to his left uh, but what i want to do is actually place a person to his right as well uh, because uh, i feel like that'll uh, capture the scene a little better so I will put this very uh, loose person walking down here and this is at a slight angle so uh, which is which explains why the people at the back are a little taller uh, and this guy obviously has a cast shadow right here and now we have that other person to his left that I do want to get as well right over here and again you see barely any details at all just an indication for me to come back with the paint and figure things out like this there's another person here I'll, I'll get him in or her uh, and I think now we're good to go we have most of the, the, the main shadows and shapes uh, just this gas station and this uh, shadowy shape that's around here so this is our best indication of the horizon line somewhere around here um, and this is all gonna be some abstract details at the back so I'm not going to worry about it too much. There's the gas station right here. Some signs and whatnot. And this is pretty much, believe it or not, ready to be painted. Okay, With the paint I'm going to have to be very careful and, and really note what I'm doing. Um, because the paint is what's going to bring this uh, to life. So what I'm going to do is rearrange some stuff. Uh, and, and then I'm going to give you a, an overview of what the painting process is going to look like in theory. So let's get started with that. Okay, so we'll get started here with the painting stage now. Uh, let me talk a bit about what my plan is. What I want to do is convey the strong sunlight and strong contrast, but I could leave everything white. Uh, the thing is, and it's very light in the reference photo as you can probably see, uh, the thing is I do want to convey a lot of warmth. So what I think I'll do is do a very first wash of very, very pale yellow. That way all of my highlights will end up uh, being very uh, warm and yellowy, okay? And this is how it works really. Uh, when we paint the first wash, we actually paint the highlights. Okay, this is how you, uh, one good way of, of looking at it and treating it. So what I'm doing here is I'm mixing a bit of my raw sienna and nickel azo yellow. By the way, just found out I'm allergic to nickel, which is fun. <laughs> so uh, the main thing here, here is I want to keep it super light. This wash has to be almost white, okay? Like really, really, really light. Uh, and I'm going to just cover everything up. Uh, I'm not going to leave... Uh, really any highlights. Nothing's necessary here because what I'm doing now is painting the highlights. So I'm keeping it very, very light. As light as I can. Okay, so this is as watered down wash as possible. I'm not gonna refill it with paint at all because there's no need to. Uh, this also goes hand in hand with the principle of a, a mother hue uh, because what I'm doing now uh, is just using one color to fill in everything. Uh, one or two, you know, uh, one main color. What I could do if I do want to add a bit of variety uh, is to use maybe just a bit of red near the bottom or something like this. Uh, I may do that for the very close um, uh, shadows right around this area. Uh, but m other than that, nothing really. This is going to be my lightest light of the painting. Uh, this will take some time to unbuckle because I'm using very wet paint, uh, but that's fine. It will, uh, it, it will unbuckle, trust me. That's really good high quality paper. So now I'm switching it up just with a little bit, a little bit of um, alizarin crimson permanent, just to have some interest maybe here near the bottom, maybe around this, you know, sidewalk divider thing, um, edge of the sidewalk. Um, I could add some warmth to areas that I see fit, uh, but I really don't see fit to add almost anywhere. Let's do this, just for fun, just to test it out and see what happens. Uh, so we put in a bit of uh, red in here, and now we are done with the first wash. Believe it or not, I'm going to leave this to dry. Let me just hold it up 
close to you so you can see some of the details. And this is it, this is as quick as it gets really. Okay, so what we, um, in effect, what we did here is paint the highlights. This is how I want you to treat this stage. Next step, we'll start painting the people and then we'll add the backgrounds and do some negative painting, which will really make them pop. So let's let it dry and then come back and continue. Okay, so uh, this is finally dried now and I zoomed in just a bit because I want you to see the details. Now, this wash is where we're gonna do the really heavy lifting because uh, right now we're gonna put all of the important details, uh, mainly the people. Now, uh, one thing to remember, a lot of people have trouble with um, painting people uh, in general and my advice is always the same, whether it's portraits or, or just figures, you have to look at uh, what you're painting as a collection of abstract shapes because that's everything there is to it. It's just a lot of abstract shapes and if you have enough trust and you treat them as a lot of abstract shapes, what will end up happening is it will end up looking good, okay? But you have to develop that trust. So I'm starting with uh, the face here and I'm just mixing a bit of red and a bit of blue. That's all there is to it. The colors, again, remember, they're secondary. As long as you get the value to be uh, accurate, that's most of the thing. Now, her hair has a bit of hint of an orange or, or yellow in it. So this is, in fact, what I'm going to use. I'm going to use straight on that yellow, like so, okay? And again, I'm not accurate. I'm not factual with my paints. I'm just painting what I see what I personally see, okay? This is my uh, impression of the scene. You don't have to imitate me, you do you and do things the way you see them. Now, everything is supposed to be really dark, so I'm just gonna add a bit more paint to it. Later on, we can darken it up a little more if necessary, uh, but I don't want us, want us to have to do that. So now, we need to make some very dark paint for uh, the rest of her uh, figure, the, the shirt, kind of a suit uh, sort of looking thing. So I'm gonna do that now. And you see again, very, very um, loose uh, approach to this. I'm letting everything mix together. I'm not too worried at this stage. Uh, I'm gonna cool it up a bit because I feel like there is some blue to that. Um, the, the main important part is later on when we'll have to negative paint around some figures. That's where, uh, that's when uh, being a little more accurate is gonna be somewhat more important. Now notice how I'm using this opportunity to convey some uh, folds and creases in her uh, clothing, which are barely visible, but they are. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go over uh, the, the, the carriage, like so. Now, uh, an important part of this would be to get some indication of her hand, because it is visible. So I'm just gonna place it around here. And what I think I'll do is, and again, this is fairly abstract, I'm just gonna lift back some of the paint because the hand is a little lighter. Uh, so back to the dark blue. Now to make it a little more interesting, I'm gonna uh, blue it up even more here. We have the uh, carriage, the rest of her figure. Now here under that, we can see a bit of the figure behind. So I'm placing that in because it is uh, one part, it is connected when you look at it in the reference. This needs to uh, be a little longer, I think, like this. And we can see some of the figure. And off we go uh, with the carriage, like this. Just placing in the collar as I see it. I'm not too worried about it. I may mess it up, that's fine. Just the, the biggest worry is that the video will end up not being worth watching. That's always the, the main concern. But as long as there is some value uh, to be had or to be learned from it, then I'm fine. That's all I'm after, really. Uh, so this is what, we're, what I'm painting now is the figure from behind, okay? Uh, that's visible um, through this. There's this uh, handle and then the actual thing. Now there is this uh, baby here. So I'm gonna, I'm just negative painting around that, okay? And now I'm coming back with a bit of uh, orange, kind of, um, I'm gonna add a bit more red, a bit more uh, yellow to it. And because it's very dark and pretty much in the shadow, I'm just gonna cover it up like that. And we don't need much more than that, really. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna connect these two parts in here. And from here on out, really, it's just about 
finishing this uh, part of the painting now the, the real sense of three dimensionality really will come from the surrounding area okay so don't worry if it still doesn't look as uh, good now I'm just adding a bit of darkness here to the hair because it does seem to be a little darker near the inner more parts of the face like this and we can come back of course later and correct some stuff and add some details that's fine so now we're done with the top section gonna add a bit more blue to this mixture uh, the paints I'm using the colors I'm using are the same as I usually do so we have the phthalo blue because I did want to achieve some uh, some strong darkness and, and this paint can reach some very strong dark values phthalo blue uh, alizarin crimson permanent and uh, nickel azo yellow which I'm allergic to nickel now uh, as, as I just <laughs> told you um, now this part with the towel is a little lighter so I'm gonna keep it light like this but again I'm being very abstract with what I see and with the details um, continuing here uh, this thing I do want to indicate some kind of a clear pure color so we do have that kind of towel thing here uh, to the right that I'm gonna make use of like this it will be interesting to have this sort of um, uh, strong color showing through and you can't see all of the intricacies of the paint I will uh, at least that's what it appears to be uh, but once I uh, start editing this editing this video uh, I will make sure that it's more visible okay uh, so now the bottom part this is where it gets important the shapes become a little more uh, important because you actually get to see them through the um, uh, the light and shadow of the scene so we have the wheels uh, of the carriage here um, we have another wheel here, kind of like that, uh, but that's pretty much it and from here on out I'm just gonna connect it to the shadow. Now the shadow is a little lighter than the actual uh, carriage so this is something you do want to take into consideration and now remember I have this pole I need to negative paint around so I'm doing that a little carefully and we're pretty much done with that first figure uh, now the reason, usually I connect them, but the reason I didn't connect them is that there is this separation between them that will help us indicate the light and shadow better. Now I think this shadow should be a little darker near its base, like this. And again, if you just treat this as a collection of um, uh, different abstract shapes, and it's a bit of a mental switch to do and to go through, uh, but, but if you can do that successfully, you will end up with the result you want, really. Um, I'm gonna leave that part for now. I'm gonna move on to the uh, second figure. I'm gonna start again with kind of a similar um, red and yellow. Sometimes I'm not even thinking about the paints I'm using too much. I'm just reaching to whatever paint I wanna grab and I just get that. Uh, usually the one thing I am concerned with is, as I mentioned, the temperature. Is it warm? Is it cool? That's all I really care about. Now I'm gonna go back to some cooler colors. And again, this figure is a little less um, prominent in the scene it's more from behind so uh, I make sure that I go quite light uh, with the details and everything I don't want to subtract from the main uh, focal point and then we have this little uh, sliver of light on the women's uh, hand in the far in the front and we get this uh, this woman's hand as well now I want to get some of the paint off so I'm, I just dried my brush on the towel and now I'm soaking back and absorbing some of the paint okay now here we have a very gentle highlight so now what you what happened was we conveyed the shape of this woman's hand using this woman at, at the back okay now I just want to darken her clothes at the back because they're significantly darker than that using all my primaries to do so uh, maybe even a tint of green here maybe let's let's neutralize it just a bit like this I'm gonna put in and I'm, I'm trying to squint my eyes so that I can see the very uh, general shape of whatever it is I'm working on um, so here we go I think we're gonna close that gap a bit there we go now it's a better indication of her hand uh, and now we have the hand of the other figure at the back so I'm getting some red almost pure I'm putting that in here that's the hand uh, and maybe some hair just because it looks like she's playing with it but, but it's hard to tell so I'm just getting some kind of a, a detail in here 
like this. And we're basically done with this figure. Now we're gonna work on this one. And you can see how slowly this builds uh, a kind of a, a shape. It looks like something. Uh, now we're gonna go later on and add some more shadows because they will be necessary. But for now, uh, so this woman at the back is a little uh, darker, it seems. I'm gonna add a bit more blue, a little more. And this is really, again, this is where most of the painting process of this particular piece happens. Um, this is the most important part here. Now what's important here as well is to leave that gap, okay? Negative paint around the face of the woman at the front. This one is gonna be reduced to almost a silhouette, I would say. And this, her shirt or blouse or sweater is a little lighter here. I don't want to go too dark, but I do want to make sure I leave that sliver of gap here uh, to convey the hair of the woman in the front. A bit of that here. And we're pretty much done. Just being careful not to mess up uh, the negative shapes. I think now we're good to go. Maybe I'll drop this part here. Um, you do see some of her figure here, but I don't want to overdo it. Uh, and I'm actually quite scared because <laughs> this is a bit of a challenge, so I'm just gonna place it in like that. And th this figure can be sent to the background. Um, maybe I'll just darken that bottom part wet and wet. Here we go, we're pretty much done with this. Uh, next up we have all of this section. Now here, because I, I did uh, devote a lot of time to this right part, I'm gonna try and be a little uh, bolder with this left part. It may be a mistake, but at least you can use this video to learn why I do it the way I want to do it, the way I, I am doing it. Uh, so I'm putting it like this. Uh, I'm gonna put his face real fast, just a lump of red or orange here, like this. And go back into the rest of the figure. And his figure is quite uh, dark, which is okay. You don't want to go too dark because then if you miss uh, the mid values, uh, it may hurt the impression, but we did leave a lot of mid value, almost mid values on the right, so I'm not too worried about messing this one up. Uh, but I will make sure to get that gap between his arm and his body that you can hopefully see in the reference as well. This is an important part, like this, so you can actually tell where his arm is and where it's holding the, the bicycle. And then we have the gap uh, between the legs. Uh, his two hands, which I'm gonna get to in just a moment, are like this. And again, this is very, like, it's almost like you're looking at really nothing, uh, but it will make sense in the grand scheme of things. Hopefully, if, I done, if I've done things correctly, uh, it should make sense. Uh, we'll see about that. And I connect this area. Now here, there's quite a lot of details that I wanna get in. Um, so we have this Okay, the continuation of his leg. And again, you see, I'm just trying to read the different shapes that I see in front of me. Uh, then we have this, uh, um, what is it? I'm trying to figure it out, um, the thing that he holds. I don't know the terminology for everything. Uh, we do have his second uh, leg here, like this. Then this part here, it's a bit of a line like that. And his legs on the bicycle for which I'm gonna go back to my red, some red here. And his shoes, let's do them yellow. I'm just really going crazy here uh, because the goal here is again to uh, learn and have fun as always. Um, now the rest of the bicycle. Now for this, I'm gonna use a bit of a drier uh, brush strokes. Just because I don't wanna overemphasize the, the, the wheels because he's moving, he's in movement, he's moving fast even. So I just wanna put a hint of them and nothing more than that. And I think this is almost enough. Now there is this line here at the back that I wanna get. And now we'll connect this to the shadow. Now the shadow is gonna be uh, similar to this one. So a bit more bluish, I would say, and lighter. Uh, and here you want to make sure that you actually connect it to the shadow. This can really help bring out the shape. Um, a lot of abstract shapes here. I'm not too worried about them. Just placing it in as I see it. There's a bit of a thing here. And we're done with this. And if your uh, impression was 
fairly accurate, then the end result will make sense. Okay, now there is some things in the background here. You have really no other choice than just to trust the, the whole process and that it will end up making sense. Now the person in the back here, I'm gonna place that in. Now it's gonna be a little, the person there is gonna be a little lighter and maybe warmer. It's like almost there is more light at the back because the light kind of comes from behind. I'm gonna use a lot of raw sienna for this little guy. Place it in like so. And again, the most important part is I wanna leave that gap for the figure at the front because that'll really help it uh, read properly. And here at the bottom, I can close it off because the light is mostly on this guy's shoulder. Okay, hope that makes sense. Um, like this, now I'm taking a bit of a risk here because this guy is not fully dry yet. That's gonna be fine. Um, let's keep it warm. Let's keep it warm. Bit of uh, red here. I can leave a little bit of a gap, as you can see, it does end up working nicely. I just wanna be careful not to touch areas that may not be fully dry yet. Now I will put this guy's uh, leg here or something like that, um, but I'm not pleased with the shape, so I can either lift it off, lift it up, or what I could do is kind of lighten it up just a little bit and then convert it into a shadow as well. So we'll do that. And hopefully that makes sense and the person doesn't look too tall or anything like that, but that's fine because it's gonna be a part of the background. So I'm gonna place that in here, like this. Not even worried about the, the shape too much. Now the other person on the other side, let's go with a bit more of a red here uh, because I used a bit of yellow uh, and hopefully you can see all the intricacies of the paint. Now here I'm at a bit of a rough angle. So I need to go from all around here leave this gap. And this is really a magical scene. You don't always encounter scenes like this, but this scene is excellent. It's really um, good, strong contrast, interesting shapes. It's, it's rare to find a scene like this. Uh, so anyway, this person's here and we have that person behind them and I'm actually gonna use that strong red because I like the way it looks in the original photo, uh, but I will merge it. Uh, with the person more at the front. So let's do that. I may be taking a risk because uh, the person at the back should be of dimmer color and I'm actually using a, a stronger red, but we'll see about that. And so hopefully that whole shape makes sense. I didn't leave a gap between them because they're at the back. I wanna send them to the back, not too many details. Going back to my blue and placing in some very gentle shadows for these people and we're really done with this section. Now, um, what we can do is, I think I'll, I'll work on this part next. So these poles are very warm. If you look at the reference, they're they're really almost yellowy. I'm gonna use a lot of my two yellows. And now I think I got something that's acceptable. Uh, looking for a random test paper, sorry. So this is too green. I'm gonna add a bit more yellow to it. Like this, this makes sense. I'm gonna use this. Maybe a bit of red here. So now you have to be careful because some areas here are not to be filled. Okay, like so. Now I'll probably need to darken it up a little because it is a rather dark area. So a bit more of both yellows, a little more pigment, a little less water. Makes sense, hopefully. And we got this pole in here like this. And now we just need to take care of the shadow. Now, because I'm already doing this part, I'll probably finish off the entire um, sidewalk edge. Um, just because it makes sense to do that and to connect it while I can. But this part should be a little darker, so I'm gonna darken it up, hopefully quite neutrally, next to the ground. It's a little darker there, it seems. Just reading the different shapes that I see. Uh, so now for the sidewalk. Now this is really interesting because we have uh, a darker area for the entire sidewalk like this. I'm gonna try and hopefully get it in one go without messing around with it too much. Hopefully that makes sense. There is this edge here that adds to the feeling of, of the shape of the sidewalk. Now it has a bit of red in it, so I will put that in as well. So a bit of a stronger red. So there's a bit of red here and I'm just putting it wet and wet and, and 
letting it mix together and I'm not too worried if it's not the, the proper way or the proper timing. I'm just letting it mix on paper and see what happens. Now for this left pole, I'm gonna still keep it warm, but maybe a little more uh, towards the rest of the mixes that I've been using here. I'm gonna use this and it's almost fading away because of the strong sunlight coming from behind it. So I'm gonna try and capture that effect. Although it's very hard for me. I'm not um, that well versed in this kind of thing. Do this a little darker. Connect it with the, very important to keep everything connected again. So I'm connecting it with the sidewalk, making sure I make it on time. Connect it here. Now we do have that strong shadow on the side, so I will just go for it. And I may get a little a bit of cauliflowers or uh, backgrounds or whatever you want to call them, but I don't care. Just gonna place them in here, maybe warm them up a little because it is the foreground, but not too much because I don't want them to compete as much with the, these parts. So I'm just gonna put it in like this. And I think something like that. This shadow should be a little longer, just making it a little longer here. And there should, I just made my hand a little dirty, I don't want to smear it around the painting, but there is a bit of a darker area here. And when you do when wet and wet, you have to come back with a stronger value so that it actually has an impact that's near the bottom here. This should be a little darker. And also now that I'm looking at it, this entire left section is a little darker. Also here, but here it may have already dried, so I'm just gonna move it around a bit and that's it. So now we're done with the front part. Now what I wanna do is zoom out a little, give you an overview of the thing and you will see how that makes sense. Okay, so now you can see the whole thing. Now one thing I didn't add yet is this shadow on the side, but this shadow is super warm, so a lot of yellow. I'm mixing it up on the side here so you can barely see but a lot of yellows and it's very fairly light, let's say. So I'm gonna place that in here and I don't know exactly what casts it, but there is something there that casts it. I'm gonna neutralize it just a little bit while still preserving the warmth, warm feeling. I don't care that it touches some of the bicycle here. It's actually important for me that it does. And it connects all the way here all the way over the curb that I just, I missed that part, but now I see that that's how it works. The shadow of the uh, bicycle guy should be a little darker. I will darken it up a little later on, but hopefully now the entire scene makes sense to you. Um, I think I will also add a bit uh, to this shadow here. I don't know why I do it now when it's, uh, I could do it in the next wash, but it just felt necessary. That's it. Uh, I don't care about that transition in the, in the, um, uh, hue or color, that's fine. I'm just gonna blend the, the two together. Now, next up, we're, we're gonna put the backdrop, okay? We have the people in the in the foreground elements. Now we're gonna put in the backdrop. Um, and the first thing I think I'll put, or maybe I'll just go for everything in one go. You know what, I'm gonna consult with my black and white reference. Okay, so after taking a look at the black and white reference, it's clear as day to me that it should be uh, in one piece. So what I'm gonna do is just start filling in these areas using a rather light value. And I'm, I'm very, uh, as you can see here, I'm looser. I'm holding back on the brush. Um, I'm not too worried about, I'm gonna leave some highlights just cause it looks good, I think, uh, but not too much. Then I'm just gonna move on with this part all the way to the bottom. But the main part is I do wanna make sure, uh, let's close this line a little nicely. Uh, I do wanna make sure that uh, I'm leaving highlights around the people. Okay, that's really important because they are there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is fill everything up, but I will leave some gaps around the people. And because we did that initial wash, remember, uh, with the yellow, now all of our highlights are quite warm and nice and pleasing to the eye. Uh, so this was why I think it was important to do it that way. Coming back here, uh, I think I'm gonna kill these highlights. They have no use for us. And then all the way to somewhere around this point, 
is where this uh, gas station is. Now what I think I could do is a bit of wet and wet in here, just to add some interest to it, and so that we can imagine there's actually something there, like this. Um, there is a bit of a darker patch on the inside here that I want to get. And now I don't even need to paint all over, all the way to the highlights. I can just let it kind of bleed together. Now the bottom part here is a little stronger. So I do want to convey uh, that because there is a strong shadow there and it will help us later on. Now there is the motorcycle there and stuff, but I don't show that here. So I'm, I'm not going to include it. Now I'm going to connect all of this thing conceptually to this shadow here. It's not a very well-defined shape. It could be more people, it could be machinery, it could be cars, the road, whatever it is there. I'm just gonna include that here while leaving some gaps around the people at the very front. And there we have this kind of a street lamp or something like that. that I'm gonna connect all the way down here. And then there is some nuance in the bottom of, at the bottom of this shape uh, or shadow that I want to get a little darker. I think it'll look a little better when it's darker around the bottom. And then finally, I'm going to go back to some shadows like this, place them in here. And hopefully all of this makes sense. Like this, this is, this is good. I'm not going to touch that anymore. Now we do have that building. That's the last miss, missing piece here uh, of this thing. So I'm going to place that in. Uh, there is quite a lot of things to do, finishing touches, but for now I'm going to place that building in. I'm going to switch to a larger brush. Now this building is a little closer, so I'm going to do it darker from the get. Um, and I just need to figure out what amount of highlights I want to keep in it. So I'm going to do it um, a little cooler, I think. Or maybe, you know what, that's a good question. I don't, I'm not sure at this point if I should go for a cool color or a warm color. So let's do a bit of both. Uh, let's see how that ends up looking. So I'm going to put a bit of green here. So at least we have some yellow in it. And I think what I'm going to do is negative paint around all of these uh, different uh, supporting beams and, and, and things that are a little more well lit. I think it will add a bit of an interesting effect. We can later on kill off those highlights with no issues. But the main part is I want to work around uh, the people here. Okay, I want to leave those um, highlights and make sure they're highly uh, visible. But actually, um, there should be more to the building here. But I kind of like, you know what, let's let's drop that part as well. Because I have, I have a problem with this figure not having this highlight on it. So I'm going to place it in like so. Now while this is still wet, I can do a lot of work in here. So I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to add a bit more paint to the, to the scene. And just start putting in those kind of details. Whatever I can. Uh, while it's still wet, trying to keep it, uh, to, to control some of it so it doesn't disperse too much. I'm going to go back to my uh, larger brush here and make sure that this edge doesn't dry on me. Like so. I'm going to continue with that. Uh, I'm going to leave another kind of a gap here. I think it'll look good like this. And I'm, I'll make it a little darker as it moves closer to us and a little warmer as well like this. Again, a lot of this is improvisation. I really don't know exactly what I'm doing, uh, but hopefully uh, if I follow the impression of what I'm seeing, it will end up looking nice and, and, and believable. Um, now, these are way too strong, these highlights, so I will um, dumb them down. You know what? I'm going to do that using my smaller brush. So here's a trick. You have this area with the gap. I'm cleaning out my brush taking just a bit of a yellow color here. I'm going back over these gaps like this and I'm closing them off, you see? And that way, and I can even just come back with a bit of a wet brush like so and close these off. Um, this top area, and I'm really trying to make the most out of wet and wet here, uh, but this top area should be a little darker because it's the ceiling. So just to convey that, I'm gonna do this kind of thing here. Now I'll exploit, I'll use my spray bottle just to make sure this bottom part doesn't dry. So I just spray it very gently. Um, and 
using some stronger paint I will make these uh, shadowy areas a little stronger connect them all the way to the bottom being very careful here uh, around some of the details there's this bit of a gap here that I want to preserve drop this down all the way to the bottom and connect it to the shadows here at the bottom and hopefully that makes sense as a building okay I don't know if it reads well hopefully it does I'm gonna continue like so. This is the thing with watercolor, really you don't know what you'll get m many times. You just kind of have to go for it uh, and hopefully it, the end result makes sense. Uh, so now I'm gonna connect this part here. Now this becomes much, much lighter. So what I'm gonna do is switch to a smaller brush as well. End it up with a bit of yellow. I'm just gonna touch, allow the yellow to touch the edge of this shadow. And hopefully that'll be like an interesting transition from warm to cool. I actually like some of the sparkles that are created here, so I'm not going to touch them. But one last bit I want to end is this part. And for that it's very warm. So a lot of yellow, a lot of red, uh, because it it's, gets struck by the light directly, okay? So a lot of red, make this part a little darker. There is a small highlight here, so I'm going to preserve that. And this part's a little lighter, so more yellow. And if you can get it in one or two goes, that's the best. Now I'm gonna place in a bit of a shadow underneath here, because, because it's there in the reference, like so. Uh, and I do wanna darken up that, that part, so I'm gonna have to break my <laughs> uh, perfect first wash. And now I'm gonna come back to this part here on the left, make it darker because the light comes from here and kind of uh, it from the back and it, this area faces less light, okay? So you do want to get that effect in. And there is this change of direction here that hopefully didn't mess up my uh, composition. Now, we do have some small details here that I may add just to help guide our eye into the picture. I may add also some guiding, guiding lines here, uh, but mostly I think this is it for this building on the right, like this. Um, yeah, this is it, I don't wanna overdo it. So that's that. Um, we do have this little shape here that I think I'll connect right now. I don't know why, sometimes I'll recognize a line that's off or an area that's off and I'll just go for it, even though it doesn't make really sense in the necessarily in the timing I did it. Uh, so now we're done with that. Now this area is mostly dry so I can just work on that. Or I'll just let this whole thing uh, dry for a bit and then come back. Let's pick some of that up. I don't need it that strong. Uh, so let's allow this some time to dry and then we'll come back and do some final touches, bring out the main shadows and, and create some kind of a, um, a sense of uh, even more depth, but I just want to do one last thing here. I can't help myself. Um, this is too much. I just want to close off this part with a bit of a lighter wash at the bottom like this. And I'm going to pick up some of the excess. That's it. So now we're done with this. Uh, hopefully it starts to make sense. Uh, I will start adding the, the very dark areas uh, in the next part and then uh, hopefully it'll read really well. Okay, so this is fully dry now. Uh, I really took some time to take a look at the scene, look at it upside down, look at it mirrored, look at it from the back, trying to figure out if there's anything that's wrong here. There are a few things to fix, and let me show you before we even add the final shadow. So first, this entire area should be a little darker, and I will do that now, just to make a separation from the street level itself. That's all the reason for doing that, okay? So by doing this, I just create a bit of an, a feeling of elevation, done with this part. Next up, uh, we have, if you notice here, the strong shadow that gets all the way down to here, but here it ends a little earlier. So I'm just going to balance it out by making this shadow a little longer, done with this part. So now the shape, overall shape, is, looks a little better. Now, finally, the one thing that's really missing to make this spectacular is the darkest darks. So if you really look closely at the reference, this woman's shirt should be much darker, this woman as well, this guy, 
this uh, figure here and all the rest are a little lighter, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is first start with the focal point here uh, and also of course the, the, the um, uh, carriage and everything should be darker as well. So now I'm gonna mix some very dark paint but I don't want it to be too um, biased to any of the primaries, okay? I want it to be relatively neutral. This is good enough. Uh, and now, very carefully, I'll just start darkening everything that needs to be darker. So starting from the hair, and we've got this, uh, her kind of a suit or shirt, like so. And this uh, ultra dark value will help even more uh, when it comes to bringing out the highlights, okay? And it's really important in this example because it is dark. Okay, now I need it to be a little darker yet. Okay, sometimes you really need to dig through the paint uh, in order to get the value you want. Now I'm painting around her uh, imaginary hand here because you can barely see it, but it is there. Going all the way here to the carriage, like this. Now I think maybe I'll leave this gap here just to indicate where the handle is, although uh, it is as dark as her clothes in the reference photo, but I think that makes a better separation. Maybe I'll just add like an imaginary shadow under it, like so. And now we get a better sense of, of how dark really it is. Now I could add just a bit more, because I do feel like this needs to be pushed and, and it, it does take a bit of courage to do that, so don't be afraid to stick the, the brush inside the paint, really go for it, okay? So here we go, now I think we're done with this part. Now the carriage as well, it's a bit dark, this area behind the head of the kid is a little darker. Now because it's all in the shadow, I'm not worried too much about the details, I'm just kind of placing it in there. Let's switch out just to create some interest and use a bit more uh, of a yellow dark value. And a lot of these things again are very intuitive, I don't think about them too much, I just reach out and grab whatever paint is closest or easiest to grab. We have this kind of thing here. Uh, this towel here is, is is indeed a little lighter, but I'm gonna negative paint around it, or blanket, sorry, it's probably not a towel. And I kept saying towel, but it's probably a blanket. Uh, and we have some of the folds on it. Not too much here. Just a little bit of a hint of an indication. Now you can better see the shapes here. Now this lower area should be much darker as well, because it's darker than the shadow, okay? Uh, and in my painting it's not, so we're wa we want to get it to the stage where it's darker than the shadow. Now remember, what we're doing now is glazing, so inherently it's gonna be darker, because it, the water, the paint adds up together. Um, but we do need to use quite a lot of paint uh, to get it to be as dark as necessary. What I'm saying is that it, it builds itself up in, in layers, but still you need a strong value to really get that differentiation. Many times it'll be a little confusing if you look at the reference, so all I recommend you do is turn it into black and white, and then it, it'll be a little easier to tell the, the values uh, apart. Now this should be a little darker still. Under the blanket should be a little darker as well. Here as well, here there's a thing for the kids to hold, I assume. And that's it, we're done with this part, I don't want to overdo it. Now this woman as well should be much, much darker, her shirt. Uh, and there is a small correction here, I'm gonna use a mid value just to close off that gap. It's a little too large uh, to my taste. Now her hair, there's a strong shadow here and her hair wraps her face all around, so I kind of connected the two. Now all the way to the bottom here. And now we already enhanced the focal point significantly because now it, it pops a little more. Which actually makes me think I'll consider leaving the left part a little lighter actually. But we'll see about that in just a moment. So uh, we are pretty much done with this section. Okay, um, I will just very lightly add a bit of a, um, just a small thing here just to make the highlights a little clearer to see and I will absorb back some of that excess paint and I think this, this looks good now, I don't need to touch it anymore. <sighs> what else should we do here? I th think I'm gonna add some darks to the guy behind the, the cyclist or you know what, we'll darken both. Let's darken both of them just a little bit. 
keeping it somewhat neutral, not fully, but somewhat. So we have the hair that's a lot darker than the face. And we'll envelope the shape of the face like so. A lot of paint we need for this, a lot, a lot of paint. And to not be afraid to really play around with the paint on the palette until we get what we need. Because I see a lot of people are very timid like this. You have to really dig deep into the paint. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, so we come back around here. Uh, it's funny, when I narrate while I do the paintings, I have less of attention to talk about uh, off-topic things. So that could be a plus or a minus, depending on what you enjoy in the narration. But uh, in any case, I do think it's important to see the, to hear my thoughts in real time. But anyway, now we made this guy pop as well. What I think we'll do is create a bit of a shadow on the guy behind him. Uh, but very gentle with this one. We won't go too dark. So I just want to indicate that he's wearing this... Um, jacket or something like this. There's his arm moves forward like this. He has glasses. Let's get those in. Who knows? Let's just get them in. And he has this shirt around here. And again, this is barely changing anything, but now it already reads a little better. And you can hopefully tell. I know it's very small details, but you can hopefully tell that it reads a little better. Um, and yeah, this is mostly it for this part. I'm now contemplating what I should darken a little more. Let's darken just a bit. This is the stage of like fixing mistakes. I'm just going over everything and seeing, okay, this part should be darker, this part should be lighter, and so on. So I'm gonna use uh, a bit of a dry brush to get some details on this figure behind here. Not a lot, and that's it. As long as you can as soon as you can read it properly, you don't have to do anything. But I do see that her sweater or whatever has this, these stripes that I actually like. So I will add them in. So uh, sometimes you have to make some spontaneous decisions. Just want to get rid of that edge. Um, so we're pretty much done. Though there is a, an indication of this woman's legs around here moving. So I will just add that very gently in here. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to do is uh, improve these, because these should be a little darker, and I had a feeling this will happen. So I'm going back with that same kind of warm uh, color. I'm trying to mix it now. Let's use this pool. A lot of yellow. A bit of, a bit of everything, really. And just trying to figure out, you know what, let's darken this. I don't want to darken it too much. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it almost as is. I'll darken the, the, the curb. So I'm going to use that same yellow to do that because it is much darker than it currently uh, is. There we go. Now we have a bit of a better separation, I think. Um, and quite frankly, there isn't an awful lot of things to add anymore. We're pretty much close to the finish of this. Um, I'm just gonna take a few seconds to take a look at the scene and see if something's missing. Okay, so as a one last touch, I will slightly darken their shadows because they do seem to be a little darker. I'm almost running out of battery in my camera actually, but uh, that's, I think it's gonna be fine. It will make it just near the base, okay? Not the entirety of the shadow. Same goes for this dude here on the bike. Gonna darken the base then come back with a bit of a wet brush and kind of blend it in and I think we're done. I'm gonna charge my camera a bit, then sign it and, and say a few final words and maybe uh, do some small modifications if necessary. Okay, so I spent some time observing uh, the final piece and I do have a few small things I want to correct. I actually wrote down a note for myself. Uh, so first off, there are a few highlights that aren't really necessary here and I do want to get rid of. It's just a little too much. So I would say I want to get rid of this highlight right over here, leave just the shoulder. Um, uh, I would also like to get rid of that. I don't need that, especially not down below here. Maybe above, yes, but not down there. Um, I do think I would want to get rid of some of that. That's way too strong. Um, in fact, it could be that these are too strong on the shoulders. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna leave them like this. Uh, so this is one thing. Now, I do like the fact that the scene is framed uh, by some objects here on the left uh, that I didn't include here. So I am 
contemplating adding them. You know what, I will do that and worst case we'll learn what not to do for next time. So there is this wheel here and then it has all of these things coming out of it. This goes up like this and it casts this sort of shadow on the ground. And then I will kind of connect it, this is me just improvising, connect it to another shadow here. So at least now the scene feels like it's closed off from the left. That's something that seemed to be uh, of benefit. Now there is this section here that I feel like it's a little too light, but I'm going to leave it like that. But the one thing that I did notice is that there is this tree at the very back. Now I didn't put it here, but I think I will just kind of stick it in from the top, because I do think it may add some grace and interest to it, and I'm just trying to get it to look very sketchy and kind of random. But I do feel like that's a nice way of framing up the scene from up top, because it is not open in the reference. Like this. So we're pretty much done with that. It's actually, it goes over the gas station, so I'll just continue it like this, and I think that looks kind of nice. Uh, what else do we have here? There is, um, okay, there is a highlight here that I think also is just too pronounced around here. I'll drop that. Um, I also want to drop this part and probably this part. It's just a little too much. You don't need all of these highlights to uh, get a good sense of light and shadow. Uh, woman shadow, yeah, I didn't add the shadow of this woman, so I'm just uh, assessing where it should be, so somewhere around here. And that's good enough of an indication. Don't need more than that. Uh, the bike grip uh, should be a little thicker. I actually wrote down a list of things to correct. So this should definitely be thicker so that it actually reads well, like this. Um, and on the sides it should be a little thicker as well. So that's a little better. And finally, that's I think that's the last one. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed seeing this process. I'm gonna soon uh, do a face-to-face -face wrap up. Uh, but this was a very enjoyable one for me. Uh, I like these scenes with high contrast. This is really a magical subject. You don't get a lot of these. Now, sometimes these subjects that look the, the coolest uh, may not necessarily be uh, the best decision to paint. Here I felt like I was able to achieve some of what I intended, but not all of it. Uh, and sometimes these magical scenes can blind us a bit and make us think that uh, it's very simple as long as we get these highlights here and we're good to go and that's not the case there is a lot of uh, other work to do uh, but hopefully still the result is nice and pleasing to the eye and actually before we wrap up the video I thought it would be nice of me to remove the tape uh, because I never do so this will be a good opportunity if I'm already showing you a completed process from start to finish uh, I want you to see the beautiful frame uh, that's created uh, once you remove the tape here. Um, and this is dried significantly well. I Again, ideally let it dry for like a few more hours because that'll um, prevent any final buckling from staying after you remove the tape. But that's fine. Here is the final result. Uh, so again, hopefully you enjoyed this process and let's wrap it up. So this is it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the process and it's a bit of a longer one and I'm actually showing you the whole steps and the sketch and everything. So uh, hopefully that gives you a better idea of how I uh, approach a painting. Uh, I would say the one thing I think my execution on this um, uh, reference was good, except for one thing I would play around with the composition a bit and move the people around. That's the one thing in which I feel it lacks a bit, maybe to put another person at the same distance right next to one of these because we have two at the front then at the back at the back um, so I feel like that's the one thing that could have been improved uh, but at least that gives you a window to uh, to my mind and how I approach doing these long processes I've been listening to you I'm trying to do more of these for the next week or so let me know in a comment below what you thought of this one the previous one was shot with my iPhone uh, today I shot it with my camera so it's a bit of a different quality 
Hopefully it's still good. It's funny to discover that your iPhone has better video quality than your actual video camera. Uh, but in any case, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't um, and, and hit the bell button as well to receive notifications for new videos uh, the, as they come out and then you can save them for later if, if they're long and you can't do it at the time. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of interesting links uh, in the description box. So if you want to learn how to draw like me, be sure to check out my beginner's drawing course. If you want to just listen to me talk uh, about different topics, about creativity and productivity and, and business for artists and stuff like that and how I make my income as an artist, I have the podcast below. So be sure to check that out uh, as well. All sorts of interesting things. But most importantly, let me know in a comment below uh, what you think. And I will talk to you again in another video really soon.